Prestige heads and welcome to American Prestige. I'm Danny Bessner here as always with my friend and comrade Derek Davison. And we're very excited to welcome back to the podcast today, returning champion Samuel Moyne. Sam is a Chancellor Kent professor of law and history at Yale. And he's also the author of the new book, Liberalism Against Itself, Cold War Intellectuals and the Making of Our Times. So Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me again. Um, so let's just start with the basic question, which is obviously you wrote this because you were invited to give lectures. But uh, be- beyond that, wh- why did you choose to give lectures on this particular subject? And in particular, why did you focus on these individuals? Um, and maybe I should just lay the stage. But this is this is classically how Cold War liberalism has been studied since basically Jan Werner Mueller wrote that famous article in 2008 um, about Popper and Aron and Berlin, I believe, were the you know the triple threat. Um, and so basically, Cold War liberalism has been studied effectively as a series of individualized portraits of intellectuals. And I think this fits very nicely into that strand of history. So how did you come to this topic? How did you come to write about these people? Yeah, so it's it is old school, I think, in form, uh, and and as you say, I completely agree. And my choice of protagonists, uh, because this is a book that is trying to revise what others have said and thought, not to you know constitute the kind of topic of Cold War liberalism in the broader sense, which you know you and Danny Jenkins and others uh are are doing um, are wasting our lives on <laughs> i i wanted to go back to those people canonized when or recanonized when i was a young person and you know as a, a kind of budding intellectual in the 1990s and really before jan who's a kind of in a way a latecomer barely older than me um it, those figures, uh, Isaiah Berlin, most especially, but also the others you mentioned, were 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 placed in the stratosphere at the end of the Cold War by senior members of the kind of liberal intellectual establishment. People like Tony Jutt and Leon Wieseltier, uh, and so many others, and. They, they were therefore kind of set up, I think, for a fall. Uh, it's not the only reckoning with Cold War liberalism that I think is n- worth attempting, but it was mine. Absolutely. And I'd actually like to maybe go a little back because I'm very interested in your intellectual trajectory itself. You know, when I was an undergrad at Columbia, I I would not have known Sam Moyne as a raging leftist that he is today. So I'm I'm wondering, have have you yourself politically transformed in the last 15, 20 years? You know, there's this millennial left wing and there's a a, a sort of smattering of Gen X professors. And and you're probably the most important important of those um, for your work. And and also just um, you happen to train a lot of the people who wrote for the little magazines from 2015, 2016 on Meany, more times, uh, Danny Simons Jenkins, Mira Siegelberg, Kristen Loveland, a bunch of, a bunch of people went, went through the Sam Moyne class. So I was just wondering how, how have you transformed or were you always just sort of a lefty? Were you like an anti WTO guy in the nineties or did this change over time? Well, I, I've been presented as as someone who, you know, signed on to liberal internationalism in the 90s. Uh, and I think I've at times helped propagate that narrative, you know, emphasizing that I worked on the, you know, bombings of, Kos- of Serbia in 1999 in the White House as an intern and, you know, saw the light uh, uh, later I think the the truth is that I've always harbored, you know, leftist uh, sensibilities. I mean, I studied with one of the great historians of Marxism in the 20th century and always have taken.